All right. Um, I am Matt Madick. Um, I am a vertical marketing manager on the backcountry team for Onyx. Um, I grew up in a uh, town in central Pennsylvania and discovered snowboarding. And that has kind of like built all of the uh, outdoor adventures that I have experienced thus far. Um, I currently live out west in Carbondale, Colorado, and um, am just always on the hunt for bigger and better adventures. And I am Emily Ellis, also on the vertical marketing team for Onyx Backcountry. A uh, little background, I grew up in the south, actually. Um, lots of hiking and camping and water sports, and then followed some family out to the west where I began backcountry skiing and mountain biking and really exploring some of these bigger western mountains out here. Really happy to be with you guys tonight. All right, so what's on the docket for tonight? Um, we're gonna kind of start with like a first time in the app and like what you can expect the first time you boot it up. Um, then we're gonna go over trail mode, snow mode, a uh, handful of the tools, how to share and discover new trails and uh, you know share information with friends. Um, I'm gonna give you a brief look at the web map and then we're gonna get into our giveaway and our Q and A. All right, so now I'm actually gonna switch to, whoops. Switch to my phone so I can show you all how, what you can expect looking at the app. All right, just one. All right, here we are. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to showcase first, like what you can expect when you're looking at the app um, and you boot it up for the first time. So. Starting in the upper right corner of your screen, there's a magnifying glass up there. And when you select that, that enables you to search for basically whatever you want. So you can either search for a town that you're gonna go visit like Moab. Um, you can search for a trail that you like to hike that you know by name. Um, you can even search for particular campgrounds, um, anything in the app. This is a place that you can actually search for it. Um, moving a little further down, um, you'll see this weather widget right here in the it's, uh, green little circle right there. Um, and if you click that, it'll actually give you the um, it'll give you the current weather conditions um, from your nearest uh, weather station. So looking right here, you can see here's the current temperature, the moon phases, um, and you see an extended forecast as well. Um, below that, you can see um, in the bottom right corner, this is where you're going to select what type of map you're looking at. So you can choose between satellite, hybrid. Um, a topo map, and then this is where you can toggle on uh, 2D or 3D, um, which we'll go into a little bit more later. Um, the thing below it is this little crosshair thing in the bottom right corner. Um, that will actually just lock onto your current location. And if you tap it twice, it'll actually orient based on where you're looking. So you can kind of go right or left. And that's really helpful when you're <laughs> trying to navigate on a trail and you're a little bit confused as to where you are. Um, the bottom row of the app contains the discover feature, the offline maps, my content, um, tools, and the tracker, which we'll all go over individually in the future. Um, uh, above that, in the activity selector, this is where you select between trail mode and snow mode, and where you can toggle on all of the layers that are available in Onyx Backcountry. And then in the top left uh, corner, there's this like hamburger menu, um, which gives you access to your account settings, um, help center and contact us. So in the my account, you can see, you know, like change your password, see when your membership expires, um, and just kind of manage your account overall. Um, in the settings, you can change, um, you know, whether or not you want to use Imperial metric. Um, and then these three settings I find are really important. So um, these map settings show crosshairs. I love having that turned on. Um, enable pinch to rotate so you can kind of navigate and move um, and not always be north oriented and then enable 2D map tilt. So those are kind of the ones I always have turned on. And then if you're ever confused about how to do something in the app, there's a help center right here. So this will actually have a lot of like the answers that you probably are all coming here for. Um, so yeah, use this if you're ever curious. And then if you're really stuck, um, you hit contact us and you'll get in touch with our customer support right there. Um, and from there, um, we're gonna start talking about uh, trail mode and all the features involved with that. Yes, so you can see at the bottom left-hand corner, the activity is set to trail mode. Um, and 
this is just one of our two features right now, trail and snow. Um, but while in trail mode, you can discover all kinds of different points of interest. Um, so if you click on that discover mode, it'll show you trails, um, camping spots, it'll show you um, different put in areas, it'll show you anything just right in that area for your uh, trip that you're trying to plan or see where you're where you're at. We get all of this uh, rich content and data from hiking project and trail run project, outdoor project, along with government supported services. So all of the trails are synced in up to date. Um, so say we're down in Moab and we wanted to go to the Corona Arch. Um, you can type that in in the discover feature and it'll take you and show up on that Corona Arch right there. Um, through that, you can see different elevation profiles, which is really great. You can see the trail difficulty. You can see the elevation um, route type. You can see the best times of year to go. There's really great weather profiles along with this rich content that we were speaking of, photos, descriptions, pros and cons of the hike, really, really great for planning out any kind of trip that you're wanting to take. Um, if you wanted to, after you hiked this, add a photo yourself or mark it as a waypoint, that is um, a really great way to track where you've been and remember your, your adventures. Um, if you can see on this screen, there are different colors. So this is the trail difficulty feature. Um, it shows the red for the really steep parts the, and then the green for more moderate areas with the yellow and orange in between those. So I personally find those really, really helpful when on a hike to know how much more elevation you have, um, if you're in the clear with the green or the yellow, or if you know you're climbing a mountain and you're almost done, you're almost out of that red. Um, so those are all really, really great features to use and to explore uh, the app with. Yeah, and another um, thing I like to use, so if you're doing, um, if you're looking at this area, like you kind of see me kind of pivoting around, that's that uh, two fingers to, to rotate and everything. Um, and that is also useful in 3D um, when we're looking at this hike. You can actually get some super high detail imagery of these hikes and kind of put yourself boots on the ground before you even arrive in these areas um, and kind of just like pinch to rotate and explore. So again, you can discover new trails a couple of different ways um, in the app. You can use the discover tab right down below the trail activity to type in different routes or things that you would want to explore, or you can use that magnifying glass at the top right hand corner. So there are a couple different ways to, to find different trails, again, camping spots, um, river put-ins. Um, there's actually breweries that you can find as well, public restrooms. So the discover feature is very, very, equipped with um, whatever you would need to, to find out while on your adventure. Yeah, and if so you're trying to look for like, I'm yep. oh, sorry. No, that's <laughs> okay. So say that you are um, wanting to find a camp spot and you're unsure of where public or private land is, um, you can easily just tap on the app anywhere and it will show you if it's government land, if it's public land, um, or if it's private land. So Matt just tapped on the screen and it happened to be BLM land. And you can tell too by the, the color coding um, that is national park land, um, really, really helpful while trying to route plan and find a place to, uh, either hike or camp for the night. 
Um, another one of our features on here is planning for um, wildfires. So this is very common out in the West and uh, in the East as well. So you can touch the trail um, icon at the bottom left-hand corner and this will, this will swipe up. Here you can toggle between active wildfires, air quality, and then historical wildfires as well. And I think we're gonna go to the Cascades where there are actually active wildfires right now, just to give you guys a little bit of a clearer idea of um, all of the technology that is in this app. So here you can see some of the, the different um, air quality layers. Um, and active wildfires. So that red icon with the fire, those are all actually active wildfires right now. Um, and you can see that part of a trail is actually going through that active wildfire. So always really, really great to uh, look at your routes before you're going to see if anything is going through a fire or um, just to stay safe and be aware. Another feature is um, our smoke feature, um, wildfire smoke feature. It's at the very bottom. If you toggle that on, it's actually um, real, it's smoke in real time and predicted smoke. So if you um, toggle that on and see an overview of all of the smoke and where it's settling, this can also be helpful for planning um, any excursions that you're, that you're going on. I found this really helpful during wildfire season. Uh, if I'm planning a backpacking trip to see what the historical wildfires have been in that area, along with what the AQI is, the air quality index, and of course, to see if there are any active fires in that area. Yeah, and um, cooling things off, um, hopefully we're all moving out of fire season and into snow mode. So I wanted to go over some of the features within that as well. So um, to toggle into snow mode, um, you click this, uh, or the, sorry, the thing in the bottom left corner. And then once you hit that, there's a snowflake icon, you select that and it'll present an entirely, basically an entirely different map um, that is more geared to the winter and to snow mode. So the first thing you'll notice is, um, that once we go to a snowy area in Colorado, um, that we have this winter snow aerial imagery kicked on. So more snowy um, satellite imagery to look at um, to kind of help you look at as if it would be snowy. Um, and then we, it'll also turn on a handful of layers by default. So like you can see the um, US ski map. So this is level and ski area. Um, and that, that all just turns on so you can evaluate all these areas based on, um, you know, winter. So um, we have partnered with um, Beacon Guidebooks, Colorado Mountain Club, and a handful of other really reputable sources to help um, provide some of these, you know, guidebook kind of style descriptions of backcountry ski routes in order to give like good reputable uh, data on where you're going where you possibly could go, where the skin track is, and um, you know, make help you make better decisions in the backcountry. Um, I'm gonna turn on hybrid real quick. So yeah, you can see like in this particular area, this is Loveland Pass in Colorado. Um, there are these like kind of arrowed routes along the ridge line here that'll um, show you your skin track. And with all these, um, you can look at them in the discover mode, or you can just click them and see some like information based on the line you're looking at. So here's a pretty standard line off the summit of Loveland Pass. Um, and once you open this up, you can see um, you know, your distance, your elevation gain, your elevation loss, your maximum slope on this route. Um, and then you know, another thing that's important is like who submitted it. So this one's a Colorado Mountain Club line. Um, you can read an overview on what to expect with the route, a description of what you're getting yourself into, and then see some photos of um, you know, what, what the train looks like. Um, and then after you're through there, you can see, um, you know, some information about getting there, like where to park, what to do, et cetera. 
So providing all this information um, and taking it from reputable sources, such as Beacon Guidebooks or Colorado Mountain Club, is, um, is going to be really beneficial for the backcountry skier. Um, we've also partnered with um, avalanche centers around the country to include uh, avalanche uh, forecasts within the app. So if you scroll out a little bit, you can see this is Colorado. Um, and you can see all the different zones that have avalanche forecasts. Um, they are currently not forecasting right now since there is no snow on the ground for the most part in Colorado. Um, but if you were to zoom out here and you click on it, you can see, um, hold on, misclicked. <laughs> I gotta go a little further out. You can see an avalanche forecast right here. So in this particular zone, um, this is the Vail Summit zone that I clicked. Um, you could see the danger rating, some travel advice, um, and then below that is the forecast link, which will link directly to the Avalanche Center and give you the full report, um, which is definitely going to be necessary to plan your backcountry adventure and stay out of Avalanche terrain. Okay, so um, we've also partnered with Avalanche Centers to provide um, a handful of other tools. So we have uh, integrated for this season um, Avalanche. Uh, recent avalanche observations, as well as um, historic avalanche fatalities to help you understand a little bit more about the consequences of the train, um, what's currently going on in there, what has slid recently and what hasn't, um, and to just provide better beta. So if you see one of these icons, um, if you click on it, it'll give you some information on the accident. Um, and then you can also click through to the full website to um, you know view a uh, more in-depth report of what happened. Um, so along with these routes, um, and once you've read the avalanche report, there's a lot of other information that you need to plan a tour. So going back into the activity selector and the snow mode section, um, there are a handful of map layers that will help you make decisions in the backcountry. So the slope angle one, if you toggle this on, it'll color code um, the different uh, slope angle shading. Um, if you look at the topo lines, the closer these are together, the, the steeper it is, and that's reflected with the color grading above. And there's the legend uh, that just popped up right below the Onyx Backcountry logo that shows, um, you know, the green is a pretty flat and mellow run. And as it gets steeper, it turns to purple and to blue. So um, using that in conjunction with your avalanche report and just making sure that you know, um, you know, what, what uh, slope angles to stay away from um, if the avalanche danger is higher and to help find um, that flatter terrain um, to make a safer run through the day. Um, another layer that we have is visually representing slope, uh, slope aspect on the map as well. So if you toggle this one on, you can see um, which cardinal direction that the uh, slope you're looking at is facing. So is it north, is it south, is it east, is it west? Um, and then utilizing the, um, the avalanche reports information based on like where you should be riding based on the current day's conditions. Um, this is just a really good way to visually represent it and just to look for that like micro terrain as well. So like certain aspects will have that one section that kind of pulls to the right or pulls to the left and you can evaluate that as you're looking at this terrain. Um, we also have um, in the app snow tell stations. So if you see this little snowflake logo right here, this is how you can identify those. So if you click on one of these, it'll pull up a, um, a report that shows you information from the Snowtel station, which is a, um, it's like a little computer that sits out in, in the middle of nowhere um, that shows 24 hour snow accumulation, current snow depth, um, and then the temperature range that has been recorded. So um, you can see those stats right there in those three tiles up above. Um, and then you can see a little bit more historical data in terms of like where the snow depth has been over the last handful of days, um, what the temperatures have been, throughout the day. So you can see like, did it actually get below freezing last night? And then how hot did it get up there yesterday? Did it, did it get into a hot enough phrase and did it fee, did it freeze last night? So it's actually gonna be solid enough for us to ride in the morning. Um, so yeah, those are some of the ways I use uh, Snowtail. And then, yeah, as, as far as winter, um, that's, that's most of what we have to go over. So we'll, we'll kind of pivot back into planning just general for the day of um, when you're going out to do something. Yeah, so toggling back to the trail activity, um, we've had a couple of questions on weather and how to find 
um, whether where you're planning your hike or whatever it may be. So you can click on the trail that you are or region that you are wanting to travel to. Um, and right by, you see the overview, the nearby trails, and then the weather. So this gives you a full comprehensive um, weather forecast for that area. It shows you the 10 day forecast as well as, you know, moon phases, which I think are really great. Um, and really, really great knowledge of where that air, what that area is doing. There's going to be precipitation in that area um, when the sun rises, when the sun sets. And this is all obviously extremely important when route planning. Yeah. So once you've chosen your adventure, um, like for this one, you know, it is, it's, it's desert season. A lot of people have Moab on the mind. Um, I figured this would be a good one to kind of go through some of the tools that you can use to, um, you know, help you kind of customize your maps and get, uh, you know, some more things set up. So the first thing I want to talk through is waypoints. Um, these are incredibly useful for marking locations on the map that you either want to express more interest in, um, you know, some things like where you want to park, where the most scenic overlooks are, um, or even, um, you know, where you want to camp. Um, so in order to drop a waypoint, um, so for this one, we'll look at like, all right, we're going to park at this Corona Arch trailhead. You can kind of zoom in and see, all right, this is, this is a parking lot. This is where we're going to meet in the morning. So on the bottom uh, screen right there, um, there's the tools section. And if you select that, it'll open up all the tools. And we're going to do add a waypoint, which is the second one um, from the right there. So if you add a waypoint, um, it'll drop a pin right where that crosshair is located. And then you can name it. So we're going to say parking. Um, you can customize it with a uh, particular logo. So if we go into this type, you can see there's a whole handful of different um, icons in here to choose from. So we're going to select this parking one. And then, um, hold on, need to edit that again. You can also change the color. So if you want it to be red, blue, green, et cetera, you can, you can switch between that. Um, another really cool feature is you can add photos to your waypoints. So, you know, if you're trying to visualize more or like mark something or, you know, let's say you like dug a snow pit, you can actually take pictures and uh, put them within your waypoint. So you can either select from your photo library or you can take a photo. So, <laughs> and then once you choose to use the photo, it'll upload in here. Um, another thing is you start adding waypoints, lines, tracks, etc. Um, it's going to become a mess. So I always like using folders to help organize my trips and where my pins and data is. So in that next section, you can add to a folder. I'm actually going to create a folder for this trip and just name it Moab. And then you can type some notes like meet here at 8 AM. It gets busy because it sure does in Moab. <laughs> uh, and then once you hit save, it'll have all of that backed up right there. Um, another feature that I wanna show within the waypoints I think is really cool is that you can see wind direction. So if you select this right here and toggle this on um, and hit apply, it will pull current wind direction and where, it, or wind speeds and where it's coming from and show you visually on the map. Um, I find this a little bit more useful for backcountry skiing. Um, so you can put it on the top of the mountain and say like, is it gonna wind, is it wind loading this direction or whatever? But it's a little feature I like to show off. Um, I'm also going to show um, a handful of other tools. So let's say we're going to meet here and we're looking for a campsite. There's one that's very conveniently located right here. Um, and one of the questions we may ask is, I have a, a big RV with a trailer. Can I even fit in this parking spot if I find it? So I'm going to use the uh, area shape tool for this one. And this is the second one from the left there. Um, you just click that and then you can see here, here's the parking layer. You'll use the crosshairs and then you'll drop points. So we're just gonna like estimate the length and the width of this space and see if we can fit here. Um, and then that'll show you, all right, it's 42 long, it's 14 feet wide, and you can see the total square footage of it inside. Um, so I, I'd say that's big enough. <laughs> and then the other tool that I wanna showcase was the line distance. So um, let's say you were just curious 
um, about how far something is from something else, you can kind of you can do that with this tool. So if you drop a point and say, all right, there's another hike over here. Should we move the car or should we just walk? You can drop the point. Um, that'll tell your total total distance in yards, as well as your elevation gain and loss. Um, so you can make a decision based on that. And then once again, um, you can add all of this content into your folders. So we already have that Moab one built. So just put it all in there so it stays all neat and contained. And then there's some other stylistic changes. You can change your line color. You can make the lines uh, denser or smaller or dotted or dashed, et cetera. So those are the major tools. Um, and once I have those, it's useful to share them with your friends. So um, we've made sharing really useful um, or really easy to do within the app. So if you are looking at your area and you're like, all right, this is where we are, this is where we're going. Here's a couple of things to share that I wanna share with Emily. Um, select my content and then you hit select button right here in the middle. And then I like doing the select all in frame, which is just, just above that little folder right there. Um, and that will actually select everything we just built without having to like click a bunch of different objects. And then now that we're here, there's a handful of different ways we can share this content. So I can hit the blue share button at the bottom and that'll send out a link. So I can send this directly to Emily um, and then you know via text message or any of these other mediums here. Um, or if um, I'm trying to share with a different app, you can do select and then export. And if you hit this, this will actually export a GPX file. So if they're using any other apps, or um, if you just want to kind of get, you know, select a whole area and move from another mapping app to this one, um, you can do that all with one foul swoop. And we've also made importing easy. So if you have a GPX file that you're trying to add, um, if you're in that my content folder, um, just below that, the words my content, there's that import button. And if you select this, um, it'll pull GPX files out on your phone. And if you just tap those, it'll import it right into the app. All right. Um, now that we have um, our plan, as well as like some customizations on our maps, um, I want to show off um, the web map and just show like what this looks like on your desktop computer. So I'm gonna share my screen now. And perfect. So this is the area we were just looking at. Um, and without having to move any GPX files around, um, the web version of this is automatically synced with the desktop version of this. So Matt, you can actually see, yeah. Uh, I'm not able to see the desktop. Oh, let me try again. <laughs> All right, can you see it now? No? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can? Yep. Okay, perfect, sorry about that. So yeah, now um, when we're on our desktop computer, you can see um, this is the area we were just looking at, the Corona Arch area in Moab. And all of our um, waypoints, our lines, our um, distance tools are all um, automatically synced. So you don't have to move GPX files around if you're using your phone and your computer. And that makes planning really easy for when, um, you know, you start building out maps, you start really customizing your content. Um, and I personally do a lot of planning on my desktop computer um, because you can use a lot of the, uh, especially looking in 3D, you can use basically any of the, the layers that we have in 3D as well. So um, like, I know you wouldn't ski here, but if you toggle over to, um, <laughs> if you toggle over to snow mode, you can see like here's slope aspect represented in 3D. So if you want to plan any of your adventures and you like doing it on a big screen, you can do it all here. Um, and then, you know, have it all automatically sync without having to worry about, you know, moving files around and making sure that you have two versions of the same thing. Um, cool. All right, the final section I wanna go over is just back in the mobile, um, how to offline your maps um, and how to get ready for your day in the field. So, um, just gotta get my screen share back on my phone. This is one of our most asked questions is, can we use this <laughs> offline? 
And there are several different ways and strategies you can use to use this offline. So we're excited to give you guys the demo on this. And this is by far my favorite thing about the Onyx Maps is um, being able to utilize these offline um, and using all of the layers, all of the, um, you know, all the different features and just having everything at your fingertips um, while you're out of, you know, out of service because the best adventures occur out of service. So on the bottom of your screen, um, in that tools column, there's the one second to the left that says offline maps. Um, and when you select that, um, you'll be presented with an options uh, that says new map. So select new map. And once you have this popped up, you can kind of just start moving around and, and saying like, all right, where do I need to, to, to you know, capture if I'm going to be out of service? Um, because you want to make sure that you have the particular areas that you're adventuring in downloaded. And the only limitation in terms of how much you can download onto your phone is how much storage space you have on your phone. Um, so you can actually see that um, it has an estimated download size right below that picture. Um, and then it says how much space I have available on my phone. So um, when I'm doing hikes, especially short ones, um, choosing between five miles, 10 miles and 150 miles, um, I kind of prioritize it based on how detailed I want these maps when I'm out of service. So this is a pretty short hike, this Corona Arch Trail. So I like going to five miles wide and getting it just as precise as I can. So when you download this five miles wide map, um, you will see it as um, detailed as we were seeing even on service when you're completely out of bounds. So um, going back up to the top of here, I always like to label my maps again, making sure you don't get too cluttered with everything, um, but we'll just call this one Moab um, and then hit save. And then you can see when you're in your map view, see that little green outline that now popped in? That's exactly where your map is um, and where um, you, know, you have offlined. And you can see the progress of the download here. So currently downloading, you wanna make sure this is completed the download before you go out, out, of, out of service. Um, another pro tip that I have is sort of tiling your maps. So if you're looking at this area and you're saying, all right, well, you know, I'm going for a slightly longer hike or um, you know, I also want to make sure that I have these trails down over here covered. I often will kind of line up this corner to corner and download like this tile too. So just having like multiple kind of patches of where you want to download this high resolution map. And then oftentimes if I'm going to a really big area, I will offline the 150 mile one. And that way, like you can still see trails and a handful of other things, but like the detail on the, um, like the maps will be much lower, but it's still nice to just have like something there. So oftentimes I'll, I'll call this one Utah um, and I'll just download this one as well. So just waiting for this one to download completely. Um, and then before I go out into the field, um, you can see next to the blue new map um, logo, there's the one that says go offline. And this is the one I use before I ever go out out of service. This is what I used to double check that I have actually offlined a map. So this is like the equivalent of like putting your phone in airplane mode um, just for our app where it says, um, you know, hey, don't use any data, like use, use what you have downloaded. And you can see like, this is the trail we were just looking at. And, you know, this is not using any cellular data at all. And you can see, um, you know, super detailed, you know, satellite imagery. You can turn on your topo maps as well. Um, those are all there. And then, um, you know, even as you turn on, like if you're backcountry skiing um, and you want to look at slope angle, like all of that is also offline as well. So all the layers get saved when you save an offline map. Um, sweet. Yeah. And once you have all those downloaded, you're pretty ready to go. Um, so I just want to show like, two more of the features that I like using when I'm in the field. Um, and so one thing to add, the blue dot follows you and it shows where you are even on the offline. That is, yes, that is a good, a good call out um, and definitely something that I use every day. So, um, you know, this is where we currently are. This is my blue dot. Um, and if I'm gonna start going for a hike in the bottom right-hand corner, there's the tracker. Um, you toggle this on and hit start, and then it'll start tracking you. It'll show your total time that you've been uh, moving around, your total distance and your speed. 
And this will draw a little line behind you as you're navigating that will update on your map, even if it's offline. So you can say, um, you, know, you can follow your track and follow your way back to your car. Um, so if you're getting disoriented and confused, you can see where you've been, um, look at where you're going and evaluate that based on it. And then with these, once you hit stop, um, it'll draw a track just like everything else. You can name it, you can save it, you can share it. So if you have a hike or a backcountry ski line or anything like that, you want to share it with a friend, um, you can save this, share this, and um, you know, send it over to your friends to use in the future. Also, one of my favorite things about the track app is you can also edit it. So if you went on a bike ride and we're going to meet friends at a brewery afterwards um, and you forgot to end your, your ride, you can go back and do that as well. Yeah, so this is uh, this is my hike this year on the Corona Arch. Um, and in the bottom, the bottom uh, section down here, you can see there's a handful of things such as trim your track. So if I got in the car and uh, started driving away without turning it off, you can see you can actually trim this. So it's representative of what you did. I'm not gonna trim that one. Pretty handy. And then, yeah, I pointed this out earlier, but I always like highlighting this one too, is the, um, if you double tap the crosshairs, it'll show your orientation. The number of times that I've kind of been like, am I going the right way or the wrong way? Um, like this really makes it obvious as to what direction you're facing and where you're going. All right. And with that, um, we'll move through and do some Q and A. But first, one second, let me do it. All right, can you all see my screen? Yes. Awesome, cool. Thanks for walking us through that, Matt. Um, and again, thank you all so much for joining this. Um, you've made it through the, the demo portion of it. And uh, if you'd love to win this hat, give the QR code a scan and uh, see enter to win this Onyx Backcountry hat. Uh, the entries do close tonight at midnight. So um, good luck to all of you. We would also love to extend an offer um, for 30% off this masterclass to all of you. If you have not purchased the app yet, we greatly appreciate you being here. And um, as a token of that appreciation, scan that QR code or visit the bit.ly link for 30% off of Onyx Backcountry Premium mem Membership. Um, and these purchases are valid through onyxmaps.com only. So thanks so much for being here and we can get to the fun part and answer some of your questions. We have a little bit of time left. Um, and I just wanted to point out as well, if we do not get to all of the questions tonight, be sure to follow us on our different social channels and we will continue to be answering questions about different updates, features, um, things of that nature on those, on those channels as well. All right, sorry, I'm pulling up the Q&A now. Sorry about that. One second. All right, can you all see my screen still? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right. So the first one, if you had to tell someone your absolute favorite snow feature of the app uh, or the one we use most for touring, which would it be for me? Um, I would say for me, definitely it's, um, it's the the guidebook information right now. Um, we're really vetting the the information from Beacon Guidebooks and really trusted sources to provide like really good beta. Um, there's been a lot of times where I've kind of gotten a little bit of information from someone where to go, and you just can't find the skin track, and you're you're kind of struggling to figure out where to go and where you should be going. And then halfway through the day, you're like, oh, I should have been going this way all along. So 
going into a new area and, and trying to explore on your split board or your, your touring setup, um, having a little bit of insight before you go into it is, is key. So that's my favorite. What about you, Emily? Um, my favorite feature on the snow would be slope angle. Um, I really like to know, obviously, as, as we all should, what, what angles we are entering. Um, I also really love that we have different snow tail stations that we can tap into for the most up-to-date weather forecast um, to make sure that, that we're riding and skiing in great conditions. Yeah, um, we had another question. Are there any safety features for when you're out alone? Um, so Onyx Backcountry at the moment isn't really like a, isn't like a uh, Garmin inReach or anything like that where you can send signals. But um, some of the things, if you are going to venture into the backcountry alone, um, be safe. Um, but it's pretty easy to share your tour plans with people. And that could be a good way to help give yourself a little bit of extra safety is just saying, this is my plan. Here's the file. This is, this is the route I'm going to be taking. Um, and as always, like before you go into the backcountry, have somebody out of the backcountry that you discuss your plan with so they know where to go looking. Um, we have another question. Um, does it work with all the features even without GPS? Um, I'm assuming they mean service. Um, so yeah, like all of our apps and our features and our tools um, work without cell service. So even if you are um, you know, out of, out of cell service and in the back country, um, you know, and you're like, you're, you're seeing something cool and you want to drop a pin, like you can do that as well um, without, um, you know, having to be online. So you can actually customize your maps when you're, when you're out in the field. Yeah, we had, a, we had several questions about if the, if it still works with all of the features still work offline. And that's something that's really great and unique about Onyx Backcountry are those capabilities. Um, let's see what other questions are coming through. Um, let's see, Matt, do you think that we could toggle back to the, the map and demonstrate the wind direction on a waypoint again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just give me one second here. Um, and Guy L, just to answer your question, uh, satellites. So there are satellites that follow your green or your blue dot without cell service. Um, so that is how, when you're offline, you still have that blue dot tracking you, that that is connected to, to some of the satellites. Sorry, I'm getting my screen share back together. <laughs> All right, so um, going back to wind on a waypoint, um, let me just share my screen here. So we'll go over to our beloved Loveland Pass. Um, here we are. Yes, if you're looking at like the summit of Loveland Pass over here. Um, and yeah, this experience, I'm, on, I'm back on web map. So um, it's pretty similar, um, but with this too, you can just click and you can say, um, add a waypoint here. So we've added the waypoint. We're going to say this is like the Loveland Summit. And keep that one blue. You hit save. So the waypoint has to be created first. And then once the waypoint is created, you can toggle on the wind direction by clicking here and hitting apply. And then you can see the current wind direction up there. So it's nine miles an hour coming from the Northwest. Perfect. Um, cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking through for some other, there's a lot of questions in here. So thanks everybody for participating. Um, I saw one in here about um, 
integrating with Strava. We don't directly integrate with Strava, but um, we have made importing and exporting GPX files um, pretty easy through the app. So um, that's one way that I actually use my Strava data and have populated some of the backcountry ski tours and bikes, bike rides that I've gone on and hikes um, into the app so I could reference them in the future. Um, so if you had a GPX file and you wanted to import, um, and again, I'll just show this on web map now, uh, I think with Strava, you actually have to be on desktop to download a GPX file from there. Um, you'll go into my content and then you'll hit this import button. And then you can just drag and drop a KML or a GPX file here. Um, and it'll add that route directly into the app. I saw another question about uploading photos to your waypoints and if those share with everyone. No. You mean everyone you, you share that waypoint with? No, if you are uploading a waypoint and wanted to upload a photo to remember where that waypoint was, that is specific to you. Yeah, that's, um, um, yeah, so all of, yeah, all of your waypoints, tracks, and lines are, um, they're your private information. So Onyx started as a hunting company. Um, and as a result, like, privacy seems to be a really strong thing that we all respect here. Um, because on the hunting world, like, if you had all your maps marked out with waypoints, and tracks, and lines of where you go hunting, and then, you know, those are put on blast, um, that wouldn't be great for the hunter. Um, and I kind of feel the same way with these maps uh, in terms of this information. So any waypoints you create, you have direct control over who you share them with. Um, so even if you share somebody a waypoint, um, I think I'm trying to remember, I should have made an example of this, but when you share somebody a waypoint or a line, you can actually um, control who can access it and when. So like if, if you're friends with somebody, you showed them your favorite backcountry ski line, um, and you share it to them, you can actually revoke that access down the line if you are no longer friends with them, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> yes, privacy is huge and um, something that we we value very much so. So thank you for that question. Christine, I see you put in a message about um, offline maps and having trouble getting it stuck on preparing to download. Um, please reach out to our customer support. That's obviously like a big um, issue. So they can resolve it. I've, I've heard of that happening once or twice. I think it's something with like device storage permissions. So reach out to them and they will be able to help you out with that. Um, there's a question from Renee here. Um, will I lose all my data such as previous hikes if I uninstall and reinstall? Um, because of what I showed earlier with the um, with like all of your, your waypoints and lines kind of syncing with your Onyx account. If your Onyx account is still um, active, um, you know, the, all those will remain. So even if you like switch devices, if you get a new phone, um, if you want to use it on your tablet, like all of that is stored in your, um, like, you know, almost like in the cloud in the Onyx backcountry um, universe versus um, on your device. So no fears if you're kind of, um, you know, messing around with uh, different devices and um, uninstalling apps and stuff like that. Yeah, link to your account. So, great. Well, um, I am curious if you guys use the snow mode feature or the trail mode feature most. So that would be something I'm curious if you guys wanted to drop in what you're kind of here to learn about. We are planning on doing more of these 101 courses with more specific um, direction, whether that is with snow mode or trail mode. So we would definitely love to dive deeper into these 101 courses with uh, things that you're specifically interested in. So Nice. And again, this masterclass will be recorded and we'll upload it to our YouTube channel. So um, you can always go back to our YouTube channel and reference all of these masterclasses and um, you know, use that as a frame of reference if you are like, oh, I can't remember something that they said in the masterclass. 
our YouTube channel is a really great place to go back and um, check, check all these videos out. And we'll definitely be continuing the series and getting more in the in the weeds with some of these different features and these different modes. Um, so really excited. Like this was kind of just the 101, but um, you know, as you get more and more into the wormhole with with this app, there's a lot more you can do. Um, so we'll provide a lot more hands-on examples um, for that as well. Yes. Uh, and the YouTube channel name is is Onyx Backcountry. Awesome. Well, we can give you guys a couple of minutes back to your evening. Um, again, thanks so much for joining us and we look forward to the next one on one. Thank you, everyone.